blessed assurance Jesus is mine He's been my fourth man in the fire time after time born of His Spirit washed in His blood and what He did for me on Calvary is more than enough so I trust in God my Savior in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Perfect submission, all is I. of tomorrow has ordered my step so this is my story and this is my song I'm praising my peace and King and Savior all the day long so I trust in God my Savior, the one who will never fail, He will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior. Yeah. 
my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never Trust in God. Hey, community, Ryan Shibley here. It has been an incredible spring for Community Cares. We're celebrating another year of mentoring at five different elementary schools throughout the area. Hundreds of people are being fed through our different food programs, and we hosted another great edition of our undivided racial reconciliation cohort. As we look ahead, we are very excited about the summer. This is usually the time of year when we start talking about summer serve. This year, however, the event has gone through some exciting changes and we're excited to announce our new Community Serve initiative. Community Serve is an opportunity for all of us as the church to embrace serving for the month of June. We want everyone to experience the great things happening through community, whether by shadowing on a new team or getting involved in one of our Community Cares projects. Look for information in the weeks ahead but start thinking now about how God may be equipping you for something new and exciting. This is our opportunity as God's people to serve his kingdom, his church, and each other. Thank you for your willingness to serve and thank you community for being the church. Hello and welcome to Community Online. I'm so glad you're joining us today. Here at Community, we are committed to helping people find their way back to God. This mission is the heartbeat behind everything we do. We believe the life you are longing for can be found in a growing connection with God, the church, and the world God's given us to love and serve. It's what we've been calling the You Plus Life, and if you're unsure of how to get started, drop us a comment and we will be sure to connect with you because we want to help you experience it. If you are new here, I wanna say a special welcome. By joining us today, you've already taken your first step and we'd love to help you take your next steps. To do that, scan the QR code to check in and create your account so we can learn your name and reach out. Or feel free to say, hey, in the chat or request prayer. We would love to connect with you. If you're like me, you may find yourself often wondering, what will make me happy? What brings me joy? Jesus has the answer and example to follow. He modeled it for us all throughout his life. In Acts 20, Paul reminds us that the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Greater joy comes from the giving. Think about it. When you hear stories of someone finding their way back to God, or when you see someone's face light up from an encounter they had with Jesus, joy is overflowing. Each week, we have the opportunity to invest in something bigger than ourselves. Because of the ministries that happen here at Community, we have a front row seat to the change happening in people's lives. When you give back to God here at Community, you're investing in that and life change. And Jesus says you will be blessed by it. You will experience joy. So I invite you to join me right now in giving back to God. You can give online or set up your recurring gift by going to givenow.cc or by texting the word GIVE to 331-226-1686. As you give, let's get ready to hear from teaching pastor Tammy Melchin as she brings us the next message in our series, Her Story, Women in the Bible. Anytime women are put into leadership or preach or are platformed, it's an opportunity to shape the imagination yes. of the church. I genuinely hope that every girl, every young woman, every woman sees community as a place where I can fully use my gifts for the mission of Jesus. That was the intention at the beginning of creation, this, this mutuality this equality, this men and women side by side carrying out the rule of God in the world. 
As early as second grade, it was clear that Max Johnson was special. He counted everything, the steps to the road, the steps up to church, the number of dishes and silverware. If it could be counted, he counted it. Math came so naturally to him that he was quickly placed in advanced classes and he excelled. He would end up moving on to high school at 10 years old and he graduated and entered college at 15. He graduated summa cum laude at 18 years old and headed out into the world. Max took a teaching job and did that for a while. Then he got married and once he had kids, he left teaching and stayed home with the kids for a number of years. It wasn't until his spouse got very sick that he returned to teaching. And then at age 35, he had a breakthrough. He took a job at NASA and immediately found his footing. His brilliance was unmistakable and he played a key role in the development and advancement of the space program. Now, let me ask you a question. Does that story totally add up? The middle part doesn't make sense, right? You don't go from child prodigy to adolescent genius to stay-at-home dad only to fully realize your mathematician potential in your mid-30s. There's gotta be more to the story, like, I'm clearly leaving out some key detail about his mental health or an unexpected stint in prison or something like that. Well, you got me. I did leave out a pretty significant detail. Actually, I didn't leave it out. I rewrote history. His name wasn't Max Johnson. Her name was Katherine Johnson. She was a child prodigy, a math genius, a college graduate at 18 years old. The unusual detail is not that she became a teacher and stay-at-home mom. It was the 1950s. And in that era, that was just not, it, it was not only normal, it was expected. The unusual detail is that in her mid-30s, she went to work for NASA. And she began to work on calculating the trajectory for America's first space trip in 1961 and went on to do the calculations for the first moon landing in 1969. Many of you might know her story from the movie Hidden Figures. You see, it didn't matter that Katherine Johnson was brilliant. With no female mathematicians or astronauts to look up to, Katherine simply did what a woman was expected to do for a while at least, until she joined NASA and, and pretty well changed the world. But her story was largely untold until Hidden Figures came out in 2017 and was nominated for Best Picture. Now her name has been properly returned to the history books and given the prominence it always deserved. So, what's my point? There is a broken thing about our history where the achievements and advancements of women have been undershared and at times completely erased. And I'm not just talking about the history in textbooks or politics or corporate America. I'm also talking about the church. We all agree that there's a role for every person to play in the body of Christ. And yet, in this series, we're confronting the reality that the role of women in the church has often been diminished and the result is an unbalanced and incomplete picture of the kingdom of God. We're aiming to right-size that picture by telling the stories of the women who shaped and influenced the first century church, the women who helped get us to where we are today. So today, I wanna to tell you about another hidden figure, a trailblazing woman in the Bible who I'm guessing many of us have never heard of. These stories matter because first, we can learn from the lives of these early Christian female leaders, much in the same way that we can learn from Peter or Paul. And second, silencing and excluding these women's stories has often led to silencing and excluding women in the church today. In fact, next week, we're gonna share a conversation that I was privileged to be a part of with our lead pastor, Dave Ferguson, and special guest pastor, Tara Beth Leach. We're gonna share stories and discuss some of the passages that have been used to silence and exclude women. But today, we're gonna to learn about a trailblazer who only appears in one verse in scripture. Now, of course, that's not a lot of content, 
But through just this one verse, we can learn so much about her. Her name is Junia. We discover Junia in Romans 16, where, where Paul closes his letter by praising a number of early church leaders. And in verse 7, he writes, Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Now, this is an easy verse to, to skip over, as Paul is greeting two church leaders who, who don't show up anywhere else in the Bible. But in this one verse, only 28 words, Paul actually gives us a great deal of information. Before we dive in, let me tell you this, though. For a thousand years, some in the church tried to make Junia a hidden figure. You see, the earliest Christian writers all took it for granted that Junia was a woman. But in the medieval period, translators of the Bible became uncomfortable with the notion that a woman could be called an apostle. And so, they tried to do what I did earlier. They tried to make a Katherine Johnson into a Max Johnson. They intentionally changed the name to Junius, claiming that it was a male name. And they did this simply because a female apostle did not fit their narrative, namely that only males were allowed to hold leadership positions in the church. And there's a big problem with this, however. Junia, the female form of the name, is a very common name from the first century Greco-Roman world. Junius, a masculine form of the name, doesn't show up at all. Now, thankfully, scholars today went back and corrected this translation era, error. And now there is widespread consensus that Junia was, in fact, a woman. Although some translators, perhaps still uncomfortable with this reality, include a footnote in their Bibles with the male name Junius. But Junia was a woman, and Paul calls her an apostle. So let's talk about what we can learn from Junia or about Junia from this single verse. Let me start by mentioning that it's likely that the man named with her, Andronicus, was her husband. So what we learn about Junia is also true of him. First, Paul says that Junia was outstanding among the apostles. Now, did you know that there were more than 12 apostles? Like sometimes when we hear that word, we, we think of Jesus' 12 disciples, but while the 12 disciples were apostles, there were more apostles, but you already knew that though, didn't you? After all, Paul was an apostle. He repeatedly refers to himself as one, and yet he wasn't one of Jesus' original 12 disciples. So there were others in the early church who were considered apostles. And here in Romans 16, we have a female apostle. Now, what is an apostle? Well, scholar Michael Gorman writes, by apostle, Paul probably means someone like him who has seen the resurrected Lord and has been called and commissioned to take the gospel into the world. Junia was an apostle. She was commissioned to go out and take the good news of Jesus to the towns and, and cities in the known world. She was an apostle. And not only that, she was considered outstanding among the apostles. Paul recognizes her as an outstanding leader in the early church. Now, that's not really hard for us to imagine, though, is it? After all, we have outstanding female leaders here at Community. When I think of our Junias, I think of Leanna Weber. If you don't know Leanna, she is our executive pastor of ministries who oversees all the major ministries at Community, including Kid City, Stucco, Community Cares, and our worship ministry. She also sits on our lead team and leads our strategic team. And let me tell you, she is an outstanding leader. Or let me mention Berta Fuse. If you know Berta, you love Berta. Berta's passion for Jesus is contagious, and she leads in the church as a host at our Sunday morning services at our Plainfield location, and as a leader in our rooted small groups. Or I could tell you about Gail Frazados. Gail is an amazing woman of God who has a huge heart for people who are often overlooked in our community. She leads a small group inside the DuPage County Jail 
to help those who are incarcerated find their way back to God. I could go on and on, naming all the amazing female leaders we have on staff, serving as small group leaders, leading ministry teams, and impacting our communities. God has blessed our church with outstanding female leaders. And like Junia in Romans 16, they are to be commended. Paul praises Junia as an exceptional leader. And there's a reason for Paul's high praise right there in this single verse. For Paul says she was in Christ before I was. Now, if we back up a bit, we know that Paul wasn't a follower of Jesus during the time Jesus was present on earth. In fact, he, he violently opposed Jesus and persecuted the early church. But within a few years of Jesus' death and resurrection, Paul had his own supernatural encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. And from that time on, he was all in. But here in Romans 16, Paul commends Junia for being in Christ before he was. Junia had been a Christ follower longer than Paul. And given the time frame, it is reasonable and highly probable to assume that Junia knew Jesus personally. She likely spent time in Jesus' presence, listened to his teachings, and experienced his miracles. Now, there is no way to know for sure, but here is an interesting conjecture that scholars down through the ages have made about Junia and her husband. The early church father and theologian Origen, who lived about 150 years after Jesus' resurrection, writes this about the couple. Paul might have called them prominent among the apostles who preceded him because they were among the 72 who were also called apostles. Now, this is a reference to a passage in the Gospel of Luke where Jesus sends out 72 of his disciples two by two to the surrounding towns and villages to carry out his ministry. And it's entirely plausible that Junia and her husband could have been one of the pairs sent out. If I were Paul, I would want to learn everything I could from people who had been in Jesus' presence. In Paul's commendation of Junia, he does seem to look up to her as a mentor figure. It makes me wonder, who are the mentor, who are the women who have mentored you in your spiritual journey? Like I could name several, but honestly, the one who had the earliest and biggest impact on me was my mom. As a kid, I can remember waking up and coming downstairs in the morning to find my mom sitting at her desk with her open Bible, having her morning devotions. I remember her being a disciple maker in the lives of the younger women in the church who would come over to our house to spend time with her. I remember her leading on our church's leadership team and teaching Sunday school classes. Her example shaped a lot of who I am today. Who are the women who have mentored you in your spiritual journey? Maybe you could take a minute today to send them a word of thanks to commend them like Paul commended Junia. Before we move on from this single verse, let me point out one more thing we learn about Junia. Junia had been in prison with Paul. Now, if you do a little historical digging, you'll find that, that very few women were put in prison in Roman society. New Testament scholar Nijay Gupta writes, Roman prisons weren't the sort of place where one was sent for petty crimes, especially in the case of women. Our best understanding is that for minor infractions in the Roman world, women would be handed over to their husbands or fathers to be punished and shamed. Now, when you hear prison, don't picture one of our modern Western prisons. Instead, imagine yourself being lowered down through a small hole in the ground into a, a dark and dank cistern. Feel the, the shackles shutting around your ankle as you're anchored to a, a rough stone wall. When the entrance overhead is covered, you are thrust into darkness. And if you're a woman, you aren't confined separately from the men, posing an additional set of dangers. Just imagine 
What a threat Junia must have been to the Romans or the religious authorities for her to end up in prison. She must have posed the same kind of threat that, that Paul posed for boldly preaching the gospel. This woman was courageous, risking her life for the sake of telling people about Jesus. From this one verse in Romans 16, we learn that Junia was a, a talented, brave, trailblazing leader in the early church, a woman whom Paul praises and esteems. Friends, we need to tell her story because the church needs more Junias. I say that because the achievements of one generation become the foundation the next generation builds on. But when those achievements are ignored, misunderstood, or intentionally erased, the advancement of the kingdom of God is disrupted. Perhaps some of you were the lucky ones. Your faith journey has been one with lots of junias, women whose gifts and leadership were evident and celebrated. Perhaps there is a spiritual boldness in you that came to life because of a junia in your life or in your church. And I'm not just speaking to the women, by the way. It's not just the women who need a junia to look up to. All of us, men and women, benefit when the whole body flourishes because as Paul reminds us, you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. But unfortunately, what is much more common in many religious traditions is that women are ignored, misunderstood, and sometimes erased. And what happens is that absent an example to look to, many women have been held back from fully using their gifts in the kingdom. I've talked to women who doubt their abilities, who have disqualified themselves from leadership roles. I've heard the stories of women who are overlooked time and time again. I have my own collection of stories of the times I've been excluded or treated differently than my male counterparts, limiting the ways that, that I could use my gifts for the kingdom. So what do we do about it? Well, we embrace that healing the past starts in the present. There's a healing that begins when we tell the stories of these hidden figures, when we dedicate a full teaching series to highlighting and celebrating the contributions of women in the early church. And that healing accelerates when women in our church accept the call to be trailblazers for the kingdom of God in the line of Junia. As we wrap up our time today, I wanna to make two invitations. The first is to the women listening. I'm inviting you to reach out for prayer. If there is a Junia in you that has been activated in this series, then this is for you. Perhaps you'd like prayer that God would reveal His mission for your life. Perhaps it's praying for, for boldness to walk out the mission that God's already given you, but that you've been maybe scared to walk out. Maybe you sense God calling you to be an apostle in your community, in your neighborhood, in your workplace. Maybe it's leading in a new way here at community. Maybe it's the courage to embark on a God-given dream that sat dormant for far too long. If God is stirring your heart to step more fully into who he created you to be for his kingdom, I invite you to reach out for prayer by clicking on the prayer button or leaving a comment in the chat. We would love to pray for you. The second invitation is to the men. Ask God to, to bring the women in your life to mind. Perhaps it's your mother, perhaps it's your wife, perhaps it's your daughter, Perhaps it's your best friend or your girlfriend. And then I'd like you to pray that God would help you see those women with his eyes. Not just the things you already see and admire, but, but the gifting that God has placed inside of them, the unique calling he has on their life. And pray that God would reveal to you the role that you as a man play in raising up or encouraging Junia's in the kingdom, 
that the name of Jesus would be glorified and that his gospel would spread to the, to the ends of the earth, that people would find their way back to God. The church needs Junius, women who will be fearless trailblazers who further the mission of Jesus. Let's pray for them together. Father, I thank you for the giftedness, for the passions, for the talents, for the leadership and teaching abilities that you have given to your daughters. And I pray today for, for all the Junias listening to the sound of my voice, Lord. I pray that they would lean into you and allow you to fully empower them to live out who you created them to be. Lord, and if there are any of them that have been holding back or shrinking back, either because of their own fear or because of the messages that they've received, Lord, and, and, and you are calling them to step forward and lead or teach and serve in your kingdom, Lord, I pray that you would give them the courage to step up, to step out and become all that you created them to be. Lord, thank you. Thank you for empowering all of us, both men and women, to play a, a role in your body, to play a role in your mission. And may we fully live out our unique roles, all so that your kingdom will come and your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's in Jesus' name above all names that we pray. Amen. In his letter to the Galatians, Paul writes, So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have closed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. As we prepare to receive communion today, let's remember that it is because of Jesus' work on the cross that the dividing lines between us have been abolished. In Christ, we are all one. In Christ, we are all children of God. Who am I that the highest King would welcome me? I was lost, but He brought me in. Oh, His love for me. Oh, His love. For me, who the sun.
With gratitude for what Jesus has done for us, let us receive the bread, his body broken for us. And the cup, his blood shed for us. Will you pray with me? Jesus, I thank you so much for this opportunity for us to open up your word together. I pray for my brothers and sisters who are watching online, that they would be compelled to action. I thank you for the story of Junia, for her empowerment and moving the gospel forward, Lord. I pray just for my brothers and sisters as they're streaming in, God, that they would feel that tug on their heart, that they would feel boldness to share your word and what you've done in their lives. Thank you for this opportunity to be together. In your name we pray, amen. I'm so glad you were able to join us today. Next week, we will conclude our series, Her Story, Women and the Bible, with a powerful conversation between our lead pastor, Dave Ferguson, teaching pastor, Tammy Melchine, and special guest, pastor and author, Tara Beth Leach. You don't wanna miss it. As always, be sure to head to communitychristian.info to find out about everything that's happening this week at Community. And we'll see you right here next time at Community Online.